it's indoor cricket, big occasion. It's the World Cup for 2002, the grand final here in the capital at the Wellington Indoor Sports Centre. And it's Australia versus New Zealand, the hosts, Australia the reigning champions. The big matchup right here on Sky Sport. Hello and welcome to Sky Sport for this live coverage and what is a big occasion for indoor cricket. They have the World Cup final right here uh, live on Sky and uh, it is going to be a huge uh, matchup because Australia are the reigning champions. They have won it three times. They've won all the World Cups. But New Zealand uh, are looking to try and knock them off their mantle for the very first time. Uh, with me is uh, uh, present Black Cap and also former in indoor international Andre Adams. Have New Zealand got a realistic chance of knocking off the world champions? Yes, they have. They, uh, they beat them for the first time in the semi-finals and the first time in the World Cup, actually, on all three occasions, uh, just uh, not too long ago, two days ago. That must have given them huge belief uh, because Australia have never lost a match in any World Cup. No, they haven't. They, uh, they seem unstoppable. Uh, they're a very good side, very well prepared, very professional. And uh, to, to beat them there is, is a huge achievement for New Zealand to go on and take it. Let's uh, talk about the basic rules because uh, it's, it's a pretty new game for a lot of the viewers uh, and particularly for me as well. And as we see, there are eight players per team, 16 overs uh, per innings for each side, and they're split into, up into four partnerships, so four overs each. Tell us about that. Well, uh, two batsmen obviously get to bat for four overs, um, which ends up being 16 overs per team. So you have your four overs, you must score at least 25, 30 runs, otherwise you're out. And even if you're out, you keep batting that four overs? Well, if you're out and you're out early, it can go bad. <laughs> And you lose five runs uh, for each wicket conceded. Wides and nobles for two runs each. And wides and nobles need to be re only in the final over. So that's an interesting rule to keep an eye on. Let's have a look at the uh, arena itself. I'm uh, here in the batting crease. Uh, and uh, you've got the, the nets, obviously. The first thing I see, though, is the circle. What is that? It's the no-go zone for the fielders on the front court. You're not allowed in there uh, before the ball's bowled. As soon as it's bowled, jump in there, feel free. OK, as a batsman, I'm looking to score. How can I score? Side net, so worth two runs. If you hit the ball and it doesn't hit a net, it's, it's one run. But you must run to score some runs. OK, and the back net? Back net on the full, seven runs. On the bounce, it's five. OK. Bowlers, what are their strategies? Well, they're going to look to cut off one side of the court. Um, they'll probably look to go to the top of the leg stump, look to hit the batsman in the hip, that kind of thing. Let's go down a little bit because I noticed that uh, there's a line here in the middle of the centre. That is obviously for the non-striker. Uh, he only has to ha run half a run. Yeah, but if you look, it's a fairly tight situation, so uh, half a run is probably long enough. It, it appears to me to be an incredibly fast game and concentration must be hard to maintain. Yeah, it is. Uh, although it's only two hours, but I mean, it's, the pressure is up there. And like I said, if, if it goes bad in here, there's nowhere to hide. Thanks. Well, let's uh, look at the results from the preliminary rounds. Five uh, countries in this World Cup 2002. And let's look at the Australian and New Zealand progress through. Uh, easy wins uh, there early on. Australia winning all four matches. Uh, they beat New Zealand in the round robin. But uh, New Zealand picked up 12 skins. So they finished second. Australia first. Sri Lanka in third place. England fourth. And India, they really didn't uh, compete too well in their first ever World Cup. Onto the playoffs. Uh, New Zealand were taking on Sri Lanka to see who would go forward to, uh, to compete against Australia in a preliminary semi-final. And New Zealand did that. And then they beat Australia, and that was a huge one, 68 to 28. New Zealand advanced straight through to the grand final. Australia then had to back up and beat England after they'd beaten Sri Lanka to go through and join New Zealand here today for the World Cup final. Here's the New Zealand batting order. Rob Orchard and his brother Mark will open up. Graham Murray, Mark Colton, Lee Kelly, the captain, Ian O'Brien, the Wellington the first class cricketer, Gareth Irwin and Corey Todd complete the eight players for New Zealand. Robbie Kerr. The former Canterbury player is the coach for Australia. Scott Johnson, Brent Rafferty will open up. Aaron Mills, Bobby Gray, Justin Nelson, Jay Otto, Corey Otto, his brother, Steve Butler, and Rod Chilcott completes the batting order for Australia. New Zealand have won the toss and will bat. Where do you find good times, good food, good entertainment, and good hospitality? A place where people get to know your name. Only at your local. There's a local near you. A walk away in your neighbourhood so you don't have to worry about driving. Or close to your work in the city. It's your local, so look for the sign of good hospitality at your local Point Sports Bar. It's your local point. It's your focal point. It's your local neighbourhood sports bar. All set to go here at the Wellington Indoor Sports Centre. World Cup final, New Zealand batting first after winning the toss. The Orchard brothers uh, to open up. Andre, what are they looking for in, uh, in four overs together, this pair? Well, this pair is, is probably the most vital of, of the whole uh, innings. You know, they have to score some runs. They'll be looking for 25, 30 to start with. As you can see, they're straight into the top net, so they come up to us. Uh, It's 
two runs uh, off the first delivery, running one and hitting the uh, side net as well. And it's a dot ball. Now there's a, a three strike rule. Uh, uh, Andre, tell us about that. Well, you, you have to score uh, a run off three balls. So if you miss the first two, uh, you have to score for third. Now you have to run straight away if you miss it. Uh, if the non-striker runs, it's fine. If the keeper, uh, if the keeper takes the bells off and the non-striker hasn't run, he's out. So uh, you have to go. Brilliant uh, backing up there from Rob Orchard. That was uh, good work. There's a lot of diving that goes on. Yeah, yeah. This is a very fast game, and, and Rob's probably one of the best uh, divers in the game, uh, so to speak. He's uh, he's probably been the best opening batsman in New Zealand for a long time now, and it's, it's really only been his bowling that's kept him out of the side. A little bit of a way swing. I notice this ball is very shiny. It's quite light, and it boy, it moves around on a big seam as well. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, this game's designed for the you know for the crowd to see the outs. You know, it's not it's not a batsman's game, so it will swing a lot. It'll bounce, uh, although it will get a lot softer uh, very quickly. Yeah! Oh, good effort there. A lot of run out opportunities in indoor cricket, but not taken that time. So New Zealand pick up two more runs. They uh, took the single plus the ball hitting the net. Already six in this first over. Eight, eight ball overs. Very important too, isn't it? To hit the ball into the ground. A, a, a reference to... Uh, down and up being one of the uh, calls in indoor cricket down into the ground and up into the net there's two more runs yeah you must hit the ball very very late here it's um it's a it's a huge skill to be able to get the ball over the fielders because if you hit it straight to them you're, you're generally out so rob's willing to hold a ball there and over it's that you know you don't want to put yourself under pressure by running every ball you know if you, if you don't play a good shot you don't just want to run you want to create as few opportunities as you can for the fielding side and whilst making yourself quite solid New Zealand uh, didn't lose a wicket, that's important. You lose five runs uh, for a wicket conceded. They've uh, gone steadily along to pick up eight runs off the very first over. Rob and Mark Orchard getting New Zealand off to a solid start. You see the first opportunity here for a, for a run out. Uh, this will be the third ball, they're on third ball strike here, they missed the last two balls of the over so they carry through Thanks for that Andre, so uh, third ball strike is called by the umpire today, James uh, Winshickle must run off this ball, must get a run and well uh, backed up Rob Orchard did well there and just the one run, the ball didn't hit the net one run's better than uh, negative five in this, in this case, so there wasn't a great ball in it and uh, shows, you know, a little bit of uh, pressure showing up on the bowl of you. Just driving uh, down the ground, while a good shot isn't necessarily the best shot, unless you can get it past uh, two or three fielders. Maximum runs if you hit the back net, a four or a six, plus of course the single that you get when you run between the wickets. Oh, this field, there could have been a run out there, and the Australians showing early signs of nerves. This is a big, big match, you know, it, nerves, are, nerves are huge here. They really need to settle themselves down and start taking an out or two and uh, get into it. It's good calling, as you'd expect, between these two brothers. Mark Orchard on strike at the moment. Loud, clear calling, and it's pretty noisy here at the... Uh, Indoor Sports Centre here at Newton. Good work by the keeper. Oh, no. So this is a third ball strike. This is a uh, must-run situation here. Must, get, uh, must stop the Australians from getting any outs on the first partnership. Stop them from getting on a roll. Stop any pressure being set on us. Rob Orchard would look to back out the long way, but not illegally. Oh, good shot. Very good shot. Three 
Yorkshire. Hit Yorkshire, hit through that cover region, and they pick up uh, three runs. It hit uh, the second half of this uh, arena here. That second half net is two bonus runs plus the one run. Scores up to 14. Straight into the ground, straight into the net, two more runs. It's poor bowling here by Australia. This is uh, letting, us, letting New Zealand off the hook early. Um, really, like I said before, the first partnership is key. You must get on a roll as a fielding side. If you don't, things can go horribly wrong. You'll be chasing a big title. Last ball of the second over. Straight back down the ground. And, uh, no chance of a run. Another good over. Again, eight from it. And New Zealand now up to 16 from two. Okay, James, ready, please. Bowler's name. Batsman now uh, swap ends. It's Rob Orchard that uh, comes on strike. Rob, 25 years of age. The elder brother to Mark, who's 23. Both from Auckland. Yeah, they, they play on the uh, Auckland regional side, but they're uh, originally from Hamilton. Um, Mark is in the, uh, I suppose, the training squad for, uh, for the Northern Knights. Here's the batting lineup for the men in black. No outs as yet. Now wides uh, are two runs, and the ball does not have to be bowled again. The lines uh, are there for the umpire. Similar to what uh, we have in Max. Good stroke. Oh, that is brilliant, but uh, Rob Orchard is very sharp between the wickets, and he picks up another couple. Yeah, Robbie's, well, like I said before, a very good diver, and, uh, you know, you, you get maximum uh, ability to, to get home if you, if you get a dive there. Yeah. Australia's just bowling a little short here, and, and actually, they actually bowled too short and too full, so they haven't found a length that they, uh, that they settled in on yet. I was going to say, there's been quite a few full tosses which have uh, enabled New Zealand to settle down. And, of course, the over-adjustment there, too short and too wide, and, and an easy two runs again. Well, put down. That was a catch. Off the uh, side netting, straight into the Australian fielder there. And that would have been minus five, negative five, but put down. Any yeah, opportunity in a game like this has to be taken. You've got to get on a roll. You have to start with some pressure, and they're not exerting it here. Could be a run out. Should be a run out, and Rob Orchard. He held his ground. Brother Mark was uh, running through, didn't hear the call, so they'll uh, lose five. And the first mistake by the New Zealand side. Rob Orchard should have kept going because Brother Mark was committed. Yeah, in that scenario, I mean, it's, it's a great out of course you know it was a slap reflex slap so it's just one of those things it's got to go oh that could be out and the umpire james winshiffle says not out that was a good dive by mark orchard to get his ground so a leg by and because it was not off the bat just the one run He's good stroke. And two more runs. Excellent action here. Wonderful skill. Very sharp, the Australians. Haven't yet hit their best form inside these uh, first three overs. But starting to come into this match. 18, the score for New Zealand. Into the third over. Beautiful stroke. And no run. Oh, what a good shot that was. So third over uh, finishes, and New Zealand uh, just uh, lost their way there. Just two runs from the over. That ball was really asking to be hit, wasn't it? I mean, uh, it seems a bit unjust to be hitting it straight back to the back past the bowler and getting no runs. So one out, seven runs uh, for Rob Orchard. Mark Orchard uh, on 11, total 18. This is their last over together now. This is where the, uh, the wides and the balls will be rebowled. I, I imagine that uh, Mark and Robbie here will be looking to you know, score five or ten runs off this over. Uh, anything over five they'll take. Um, they'll probably hold the last ball if they've got what they're looking for. Ready? Play! 
Mills now coming in for this uh, final over of this pair, this partnership. Rob Orchard was able to tuck it onto the onside, hit the net and pick up the run. So two runs there. You can see just how much the ball swings with that, uh, that delivery there. I mean, we've seen predominantly away swing here, but um, in swing seems to be the key when you're trying to tie a batsman down in here. to see how lady hits this right over the top of it. Mills now probably looking to get that inswinger going again. Outswinger is not working as effectively. There it is. There's the inswinger. It's a good stroke. Again, the straight drive is not rewarded. <laughs> just, just getting through the ball a little early, I think. Uh, you know, you can obviously look to hit the side net. Uh, they're looking at the back net, obviously, straight up. If you hit the side net in the back net, you still get four runs. So they should really be looking there if they're going to go straight. There's a real danger of getting out to uh, the straight drive. Oh, beautiful strike, and that hits the back net. There you go. Four runs. Lovely shot. So bonus three for hitting the back net off another net. And four runs, up to 26, best shot of the match so far. Still three balls to come in the over. Sent back by Ron Wilson. that was good work by uh, brother Mark. He sensed the danger because the slap off the net, quickly to the keeper, that was brilliant. Close call, they really be looking to get probably two runs here and, uh, and hold the last ball. I mean, they really don't want to give the Australians a chance to get back in the game. Oh, again, the feeling not as sharp as we've seen uh, so far this week from the Australians. Got the ball in hand, but couldn't take out the stumps. Last ball now of this partnership. 28 is the total. Two balls to go, obviously no chance of a third strike. I wouldn't be surprised if they hold both these yeah, balls Yeah, two here. balls to go. Good. Knock out. Not a leg side wide. That was a tough call on the New Zealanders. And the New Zealanders are looking to run this last ball. I just saw Rob give Mark the, the signal to run. So they're, they're looking to obviously dominate from where we go. Probably called a wide in uh, a normal outdoor cricket, but... Uh, Empire's in favour of Australia on that occasion. And another one. Is that a stumping? Not out. Rob Orchard saves uh, his partnership by keeping that back foot down. Oh, the front foot hits a good bit of work. But he's happy. And that's a good start for New Zealand. 28 off four overs. New Zealand will take 30 runs of partnership every time here. If they can get 100, 120, that's just about unbeatable. Next pair, Graham Murray and Mark Corkin. Tell us about them, Andre. Well, uh, both these guys like to hit the ball hard and straight. Uh, Billy is uh, Graham Murray. He's been around the scenes a while. He's been one of the best point fielders in the game. Superb reflexes and can bowl surprisingly quick for a guy of his size. But um, he likes to hit the ball hard. And um, this guy, Mark Kelkin. Seems to be the new keeper on the, you know, on the go. Uh, they, they've stood down uh, Brian Herman uh, from the squad, which is a bit of a surprise. After he was the incumbent keeper, um, and they've gone with Mark Hawkins. So um, he seems to have been playing well, and hopefully he can continue his form here today. Okay. Here we go, second partnership for New Zealand. Oh, good start. Good start. Two runs. This is uh, Corey Otto. He's probably the fastest bowler in the cricket uh, in the World Cup. He's uh, back in 98 when I faced him. He was uh, surprisingly quick on a very slow wicket. So um, he gets a lot of bounce, a lot of outswing. And uh, it's, it's one of the real keys to, to victory here. So if we get rid of him, uh, five or ten runs. 
Oh, good pace, Corey Otto. Yeah, great call there from Mark Falcon, not the run. Big boy. Big boy, I think he's a, I think he's a bricklayer or a builder or something in Australia, so he's, uh, he's got a bit of pace, a bit of strength there. Murray on strike. We see on the replay, you, you might see uh, Mark Kelton get blocked by the left side line fielder, which is a, you know, it's a pivotal point to play if you're, if you're the left side line fielder. You make sure you get in the way of the batsman so he can't get home. Well, the pace of the bowling through to the keeper. Okay. And then the throw back to uh, the fielder who was looking after the stumps was just lightning. So, negative five for New Zealand. Yeah, I think Graham, when he got, uh, when he missed that ball to get Mark run out, he just seemed to be trying to hit the ball too hard. He didn't have to try and hit it too hard. With Corey bowling, obviously, bowls at good pace, so any sort of deflection will do the trick. Okay. Corey Otto doing a terrific job here in this opening over of the second partnership. Well, pick up just one. Ball, uh, not able to get to the net. Good fielding by the Australians. They certainly picked up their intensity. Okay. And it's come ready. through Corey Otto, the pace man. Yeah, he's, he's definitely one of the keys to victory. Um, and like I said, you know, if you keep him quiet, you can generally set the tone for this whole team. They, they run off his energy and his enthusiasm. Negative one with uh, two balls remaining. There'll be no run there. He's got good length too. He's really getting the ball to kick up into the uh, splice of the bat. Murray not able to get the ball away. I think we're facing a uh, third ball. Here you're going to think. Um, Graham's really going to need to do something here because obviously negative one's not a great start to the partnership. And if they can keep rolling here, they can keep Australia quiet. So they need to score some runs. If you see a change up here, it's quite a common ploy to bowl a change up. You know, Batsman will be looking to get the bat through it, so change up could just make the ball go anywhere. Defining moment of this Joe Walk Up final right here on this delivery. Corey Otto, last ball of his over. No ball! No ball called. Not out. So you get the run. Over! no ball plus the run, obviously, for, uh, for running the run. Uh, so that's three. That's, that's a huge mistake by the Australians. Just a little bit too casual, and it's let the uh, New Zealanders get back on the uh, on the horse. Now, was that front foot no ball, or was that the length of the ball? No, that's that's uh, above shoulder height. Above shoulder height. There's the three James, ways. Thank you. If you bowl short of that middle line on the pitch, it's a no ball. Above the shoulder is a no ball, and uh, if any part of the foot hits the uh, the Stay ball increase, it's a no ball as well. The ball does not bowl again. No, you get your two runs, and if it's like uh, the obviously the, the worst crime you can commit is to bowl a half volley no ball and get hit to the back net, you know, where you get hit for nine. So, in that scenario, you'll hit for one run, so that only cost them three. So, New Zealand got out of that over pretty well. He uh, only, only scored two, but not too much damage. Murray now on strike, new bowler. Yeah, those are the kind of situations where you can win and lose a game. You know, if Australia had taken that out, that would have made them on a roll and you know as you've seen in the cricket here a very fast game to get on a roll momentum carries you through and you can you can do anything so they need to really convert the outs yeah! well, this is again a good uh, start to the second over brent ravity is the bowler and he's got some good outswing going here. Oh, that's all right. It's like a lead-off for New Zealand. You've got, to, you've got to at least make the best in play, you know, make them run. Uh, they just seem to be a little rusty here, the Australians. I think they're, you know, they're feeling the pressure just as much as uh, New Zealand. Is. Well, a third ball strike again. Australia make the cardinal sin of uh, conceding a no ball. And a wide on that occasion. Yeah. Yeah, good shot. 
was the one run. It hit the uh, top net, but that doesn't count. It has to hit the side net. Yeah, anything, as long as it hits the side net, it doesn't matter if it comes off the top net or, you know, okay. you get to run. They really need to start, start putting a bit more pressure on the New Zealanders here. They're letting them get away with too much. Corkin. He's given. He's given. Caught behind. Yes, and call there. I mean, there's a lot of noise, obviously, in the, in the arena, so uh, the umpire obviously was sure that he hit that. Well, he's uh, just told Corkin that uh, there was too noise, and uh, gee, that looks a bit rough. Look, the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, even the keeper. Got to ask you a question. If the keeper's not sure, then uh, he's closest to the ball. Play. Yeah. Oh. Run. I just think uh, the boys are looking to play a little square here. You know, they should be looking to punish this guy. He's bowling very, very full. Not the length that uh, Coriato was bowling. It might be outswing, but it's still a half volley. You know, you can you can still punish those to the back net, off the side net, get four runs, put pressure back on the bowler. Well, he's getting good movement, and that's uh, hit the outside edge. That's a much better length than Bowley, you know, dragged it back, just as I said, he's bowling half volley. <laughs> so, you know, again, get proven wrong. But um, really need his, needs to stay on that length if he wants to, uh, to take some wickets. They've only added four this pair. Again, just uh, two runs off that over. Thank but the Australians have lifted their game. Let's be ready. Still two overs to go here, you know, and 20 runs off two Thank overs you. can change the whole game. So um, they need to really apply themselves here. Graham Murray looks a little bit nervous. Uh, Thank you. I've seen him hit the ball hard in the past, and you know he, he's taken the ring on a couple of occasions, so he should be looking to play Thank his guys, natural game ready. here. Just because it's a final doesn't mean you have to you know, change or play a different way. Left arm up. Just drop the bat on it, score three. Still helps to relax him a little bit. He looks really in control of that shot. The Australian boys for getting there. The boys to pitch in line with the stumps with the V out the LBW. So he's bowling in a good area, just needs to change his length a bit, get the ball probably popping up a little bit. That's a fantastic shot. That's a fantastic shot. Lovely just waiting for it, couldn't get ahead of it. Graham's not sure of a word or so either. He'll, uh, he'll let the bowler know that he's bowling badly. Three runs. For uh, Murray. Just a good punch through the offside. 40 now for New Zealand. Yeah, let's, let's hand us are either one or two things. They can either destroy you or they can go horribly wrong. You know, with the angle going across, it makes it a lot easier to hit the ball into the net. And it seems he's just getting it horribly wrong. I mean, if he gets it in the right spot, they're unbeatable. Absolutely unbeatable and very valuable in an in a, uh, indoor cricket situation. But if you get it wrong in here, like I said, you're gone. Of course, you don't have to uh, wait for the bowler to get back to his mark to run. You can just take off whenever you like. Uh, if the back stumps and has the ball in, if he's not looking and you take off, you can steal a run. Bouncing it over the infield. And uh, they just pick up the one. It didn't hit the net. It's a huge over. A huge over for uh, New Zealand team. They've got back into the game. Now, one ball left in the over. They've uh, scored 11 off it. No run. Could be a run out. No. Benefit of the Great uh, work by Murray to get back there and save his side five runs. 
So that was a top over for New Zealand. They scored 11 from it, and they're up to 15 uh, as a partnership. 48 the total. Ready, please, Montrain. Great uh, atmosphere here, Andre, at this uh, Wellington Indoor Sports Centre. Capacity crowd, around 12, 1,300 people. Jam-packed in here to watch this trans-Tasman clash with New Zealand winning the toss, batting first. 43 already on the board. Three wickets down, seven overs gone. And it's one more over now for uh, Murray and Coulton. The Australians will be nervous here. They, they, I think they can feel the game slipping away. You know, they only got 28 in the last game against uh, New Zealand, so they won't want to be chasing anything more than 60. So, uh, really, they need to put some pressure on straight away. So you think a, a 60 is a good score? I mean, well, with, with the bowling attack New Zealand has got uh, and the way the ball swings, the pressure, the scenarios, the way people hold the ball, yeah, 60 is a good score. Anything over that is... is that would be a minimum. Let's it's say for 80. Well, they only scored 28 last time. They better remember the man. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, for a, uh, Otto's brother. This is Jay Otto, I think. Uh, Jay Otto. He's a good bowler. He's, he's a very good bowler. And, and he's, again, he's one of the more experienced players on the side. Um, he can do freaky things when he gets on a roll. So it's good to uh, keep him off it. Well, lucky there. Yeah. Very lucky. Things are just going the way of the, uh, of the New Zealanders at the moment, which is... Uh, in my experience, it's always gone the way of the Australians in the, in the past few World Cups. So uh, it's nice to see things going our way, but that's brought about by the pressure that we're exerting on them, and uh, they're not quite tidying up. New Zealand beat Australia in uh, the semi-final. Oh, that could have been run out. They haven't hit the stumps uh, that much today. He's, he's, he's a new player that, uh, that play on the back, back stumps. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen him before. Uh, he, you know, he, he looks a little bit uh, tentative in terms of letting go of the ball. That is your textbook indoor cricket batting there. Down to the ground, up into the net. Picked up two runs. And New Zealand now 49. Yeah, with, with Graham looking to play as square as he is yet, you probably want to get the ball a bit fuller, you know, try and uh, make him miss it. He's, that length doesn't allow the ball to swing as much, so you just need to drop the bat on it. Oh, good work. Pick up the overthrow. Great running here today. Great running. Fielders just asked to be uh, to not run on the uh, on the wicket during the game, so uh, I can't see the wicket wearing too much. <laughs> no, it's pretty handy cut. I wouldn't mind that at home. It's a lovely arena. This. So the last ball of this uh, second partnership. They've got it up to 24. The score is 52. Hawkins on strike. Jay Otto with one ball left. This is a big ball. This is this is a uh, you know, big pressure here for Australia. And New Zealand uh, were equal to it. They're all looking pretty aggressive there. Corey Otto losing the plot. So the second partnership is done. Corkin just uh, letting his opponent have a few words. But that was a good effort to come back from only four runs and two overs to pick up 24 after their four overs and get the New Zealand total up past the 50 mark. This is uh, the first partnership, uh, Lee Kelly and Ian O'Brien. Uh, Lee's captain on the side, a very good batsman, and, uh, and has been proved in the past. Now, Ian, on the other hand, is, is probably his weak link is his batting. I'm not saying he can't bat, I'm just saying that's, that's his weak link. Um, he's probably the, the equivalent of, of Corey Otto for them. Uh, he can bowl very, very well, can bowl quite quick in here, and has got a great change-up. But the batting here, if he gets through his batting and bats well, he'll be unstoppable in the field. He's one of those players who plays momentum, a uh, very enthusiastic guy, and is just an outstanding player when things go right. And if we can get him going right now, uh, we're getting a good way to, uh, to, to winning the game. That's a good start, 52, and you want to just keep building on that. Okay. So Ian O'Brien, renowned for uh, his uh, medium fast deliveries in uh, first class cricket for Wellington. Under pressure here, but is it uh, Australia who are under more pressure? Here's Corey Otto, fired up from uh, the last one. 
Oh, that looks a no ball. I, I think you'll find here, um, in the 98 World Cup that I played in, Ian faced Corey in the final. And uh, him and uh, Corey, they had a few words to each other. So I think it's yeah, a bit of a rivalry here. Goes back four years. And uh, Corey's a very good bowler, very quick. Obviously, he's got the upper hand here. He can bowl short with a new ball. So uh, we'll see what happens. Well, this game's spicing up nicely, as you'd expect. That looks a wide. No. Well, I'm trying to call him, but, but uh, umpire. Winchipel, James Winchipel has uh, got the best view in the stadium. He's right above the wicket keeper. I think uh, Ian was willing that to go wide more than anything. And he's happy. Ian O'Brien is absolutely ecstatic. Two runs there. Here we have it. That's what I'm talking about. That's the way he plays. You know, that's, that's him down to the ground. <laughs> If, if things go well, he'll be unstoppable. <laughs> Lee Kelly now, he's the New Zealand captain. On strike. 54. We're in the ninth over. Corey Otto. No! No ball call. Too high. A little bit of uh, unprofessionalism here uh, coming from the Australians. I've never seen a, a team look so ragged. They're, uh, they're not as tight and compact and professional as I've seen. These guys are getting affected by the atmosphere, by the by the New Zealand players, by the calls of the umpire. This, this is unusual. Well, they might have felt uh, a bit stiff there. It certainly hit Kelly below the shoulder. May have made up for the one Ian O'Brien got first ball. Good pace and a much better line on length from Otto. Sure, that short ball certainly looks short through my one eye there, man. Crowd getting right behind the men in black. Oh, good catch. Lifting the ball up, Kelly, and uh, it held up in the net, came down and was caught beautifully. Yeah, it's a big wicket. Yeah, Corey really needed to get that because without him, they, they really have nothing else. You know, you've seen they've, they've got no pace. Uh, it just seems to be Corey, which is, which is unusual. So if they can get another wicket here, they'll be right back in this. Negative one off the first over, off a good bowl like this is not the end of the world. Pleased to hear it. Play. Two balls left in, this, in the ninth over. Minus one for this partnership. And O'Brien takes another one on the body, but he ducked into that. He'll have his turn. He'll have his turn a bit later. And O'Brien. Yeah, it's all well and good to be in the face of the bats from now, showing him the ball and that kind of uh, stuff. But at the end of the day, you've got a bat. Then it becomes eight on one again. So whilst uh, Ian's taking the heat here, he'll get to dish it out later on. Last ball now from Otto. Fired up. And a terrific over. Just, well, negative one from that over. And again, it's third ball. The Australians have brought up a lot of third balls here, so it's putting a lot of pressure on the New Zealand batsman, but... As of yet, they haven't converted, so we'll see what happens here. They need to obviously choose someone who can handle the pressure and can bowl a good ball first up. That's what they need. Well, Ian O'Brien faced the two balls that uh, he wasn't able to score from to create the third ball, but in fact, the batsman now swap ends. Lee Kelly is the one who's going to be on strike. Lee's, a, Lee's an experienced player here. You know, he's used to pressure situations, so he'll definitely be trying to get at least a leg on it. Must run here. Third ball strike. This is the ball. Third ball. Hold on. Third ball. Okay. It is third ball, Batsman. Third ball. Play. Good shot. Very good shot. Yeah, right interesting through the covers. Interesting choice of bowler there. You got some of these little uh, loopy little away swingers to, to take the third ball. So. Doesn't look too threatening to me, mate. O'Brien now back on strike. Oh, what a shot! That's seven of the best right there. A seven! 
Unbelievable. That's a danger you take when you you bowl into a best like Ann and you bowl him those loopy little balls. You know, he's going to take to you. He's not, a, he's not afraid to have a go. And again, he puts some momentum right back to New Zealand. Well, the first maximum of this World Cup final goes to Ian O'Brien. I think Kelly just slowing things down there, making sure that Ian's got his head on his shoulders, just giving him ball to think about it here. In a great position here with eight runs in the second over, so again, two runs here, and, and things just start to slip away from Australia if they don't get on a roll. Very good batting. Kelly is the steady influence in this partnership, which is now registered 10, and the script the score now up to 62. Well, Brian comes back on strike after his uh, magnificent seven. Anything could happen here. Anything could happen. This might go to seven. It might, you know, he might pop one up, but uh, he'll definitely be trying to get maximum. Good call. He hit it straight down the pitch. And it was Johnson. Uh, in fact, it was Gray that was right in there getting that ball. Since his learner's lesson, he's he just looking for two runs there. You know, in the past, he would have gone for the back net again, but that's a, showing great maturity there just to look for the two runs after the seven. Good shot. He's loving it. Ian O'Brien, home crowd. Well, these two really, Mills and O'Brien, are the two sort of show ponies of the, uh, of the international scene. Mills isn't sure where it is. Ian's not sure of a word, and, and they'll, let him, they'll let each other know about it. And the opposition, Australia, they know about it plenty. Good call. There's some real danger signs that uh, I'm starting to pick up. Balls that go straight down the pitch is a no-no. Drives uh, down the ground as well, unless you've done what Ian O'Brien did, and uh, clear the field. It was the last, uh, what have we got, the last ball of the over. Well, it's a good stroke. Yeah, great call there from Lee. Great call. Saw that he was going to hold the ball. Saw that it had just popped over the three-line fielder. Took the pressure off, took a run. Just a one run, though, as uh, good feeling by Australia. Rejected, restricted at hitting the net. 13. Now the partnership. They've had uh, three overs, two overs, I should say, in this partnership. That's now the 11th over. They've got two overs left. Kelly and O'Brien. Just four wickets lost. Australia here just looking a little lost. Just looking around the, around the, uh, the field, so to speak. They're just sort of in twos and threes, not really sure what's going on. They, they, they tend to, when they're on top, they tend to be in a huddle or to be making decisive movements. They just seem to be floating around at the moment. Yeah, well played. I've got a feeling if... Uh, this Serenity guy pitches up a bit too far to O'Brien. It's going to uh, disappear into that combat sign on the back there. <laughs> Brent Ravity. Struggle today. Balls a nice pace for the batters. He's a good Yorker there. He's uh, definitely gotten away with that. Um, that was very full, although it did swing, but you, it's, that's your danger area of bowling to O'Brien. You, you, you really want to make some plays down up, and that's where he gets... And, uh, into a tight situation. If you let him hit the ball, he'll just kill you. Good pace. Again, Ian looking to play a little square there. Perhaps he'll uh, look to go straighter. Third ball again. Australians very good at bringing up a third ball, and this is where they put pressure on teams in the past, but now they have to convert. They haven't as yet uh, converted a third ball strike. No ball! No ball call and run out. That is uh, a big mistake by Lee Kelly. Great work from the keeper. He got no the ball, ball back to the uh, bowler's end in a flash. So the no ball, the two ball strike was saved. No ball uh, resulted and then a run out. It's all happening. Well, you can see the, the change in personnel at the back there. Ravity's bowling now, whereas he was on the back stumps before. And he's, he's, he's been dropping a few balls and looking a bit ragged. The change of personnel might have, might have done him the good. Oh, nearly got through. Good fielding. Awkward bounce. He's picked it up nice and cleanly. That's a, that's a big that's a big play. If you let that go through for five, that, again, leaves the pressure and anything can happen. No! Wide ball. Wide ball. Cool. Two 
runs. Chris the line, two runs. Two balls to go. Two balls. Julian, give a little wink to the coach there. I think he's uh, thinking he's going to knock a little two runs here. Just a one. That's all. One's come through. Playing smart uh, indoor cricket. What I can see, they're not uh, losing their head. They've, they've got ahead and they're staying firmly in control. And there's the skipper, Lee Kelly. It's a good idea to bat someone like Lee with uh, with O'Brien. You know, you need a calming influence in, in a partnership like this where things can go wrong. And if they go wrong early, you need someone to calm you down. And uh, Lee's been there before. Ian's been there before. And so he's got a good mix of, of experience with, with a bit of flair. Thank you. Well, Evan over's gone. And that's uh, three overs of this third partnership. Partnership worth 12. Okay, fellas. I think uh, New Zealand would be very happy if they get eight runs off this over. They'd have been looking for a, a, a 20 out of this partnership, and um, I think that's, that's, that's what they're going to get. Well, they've been consistent. 28 for the first pair, 24 for the second, and another eight here will get them to 20 for this third pair, which you could say is probably the weakest, weakest of the four pairs. Yeah. If he keeps bowling there, I think... Uh, Corey might have to stand on the back stumps. Third ball. Ian's definitely going to have a third go at this boy. Third ball strike. Ready, please. Australia have not been able to uh, produce a wicket through a third ball strike yet. Oh, gone. Caught off the net. Corey Otto plucks it out of the air. And Ian O'Brien is, uh, well, he's not out of here, but he's lost five. As good as being out of here in the last over, you don't want to be <laughs> relieving pressure like that. You really, uh, although things could change here, this, this bowler looks to me like he gets it wrong. Ian could get those runs back very quickly. Johnson is the bowler. Oh, there's a run out! Oh, again, he's the, there you go. Ravity shot the ball again. Well, that was sloppy by Australia. They should have got the run out, and they also conceded an overthrow. They have not been at their best today in the field. You see them back up to 60 after losing five earlier in the over. See now, if Ian goes back net here and gets some runs, that's uh, just a huge relief, relief for, uh, for New Zealand. Missing the run out and then going back net is huge. Nice play. Johnson trying the off-spinner, and uh, just a little too short is uh, O'Brien just tucking it down into the ground and up it into the net. 62. Partnership uh, is worth 10, so they've lost a couple. Three balls left for these two, Kelly and O'Brien. Well done. Again. Well, well waited, well waited. Into the ground and up into the net for two more runs, 64. Ready, fielders. It's a big lead off for New Zealand. I mean, that really should have been maximum one run, if not a run out. You know, that's a big mistake from the point field. So the ball hit straight to him, which he's getting practice every day, and he's just plain missed it. Good shot. Two runs. Again, he's got used to that off spinner. O'Brien and picks up two more. I'm actually very surprised he hasn't tried to punish one of those in the back. It's, it's uh, very composed and, uh, you know, calm. O'Brien was seen today. And there it is. The third pair of Kelly and O'Brien have uh, got through pretty well. They've added 14 to the 52 by uh, the first two partnerships. Score is 66. As we head into the last partnership in this World Cup final for New Zealand, Gareth Irwin and Corey Todd. Here's the bowling for Australia. So uh, two overs each. We've got Bobby Gray with one over, Jay Otto with... Uh, one over, and Steve Butler has to bowl two, but he can't bowl them consecutively. 
Six wickets have fallen in uh, 12 over. 66 the total. New Zealand need psychologically, I suppose, 80 would be handy. But certainly not to lose any ground. No, they wouldn't want to lose any ground. And, and these two uh, really did the damage okay. in the, in the semi-final. Uh, Corey Todd here, the big uh, left-hander for, for New Zealand, he absolutely punished them in the semi-final. Irwin's on strike first. Gareth Irwin, uh, left-hander. Up against the left-hand bowling. Great. Both these guys like to hit the ball hard. Um, Gareth, Gareth plays very square, uh, but can hit the ball hard and, and is quite a quick, quite a quick bowler. Again, we have the third ball strike. Third ball strike. Great. Well done. Well, pick up two. Good positive stroke. Good step into the shot. That's what New Zealand need to do. They need to be very positive. Go towards the ball. Corey Todd. Yeah, Corey's a linchpin here. If he, uh, if he gets things right, it could be a huge total. A huge total. And he's a very calm player. But when he bowls and he gets into it, he gets angry. And, and we like to see anger. Oh, bounce. Good bounce and good direction. Third ball now uh, applies again for Corey Todd. Not able to score off uh, the first two balls he's faced. Difficult uh, first up when you're just trying to settle into your innings. Wide. Oh, no. Huge mistake there from Gareth. It's a huge mistake. I mean, at the end of the day, the ball shouldn't change. You know, your, your mental makeup shouldn't change on this ball. Sure, you've got to go. But at the end of the day, if the keeper gets the ball, you're not going to get home. So. You might as well just not change things. Do what you would normally do. Back up the way you would normally back up. And when I mean, they bowl so many wides on the third ball, you should have been expecting a, a good shot or at least. So a run out to effectively like a third ball strike. Better shot. New Zealand have lost uh, two wickets off that third ball strike through run outs. And backing up. It's been ten runs, which has been, uh, well, we'll see how costly it is, but... If they can avoid any more mistakes like that, continue to progress the score of 65. Slow ball. Oh, brilliant work. Johnson. Australians are starting to show just how sharp they are. I mean, they've really got, they've got great, great reflexes. And they're starting to show the sharpness in the field, what's brought them through to the final. Now then, negative six. Go Australia. For Todd and Irwin. And New Zealand uh, plummet back down to 60. Already losing two wickets in this uh, final partnership off this opening over. Six runs though, is uh, just one hit before. And uh, he'll, he'll definitely look to the back net. That's, that's his prime intention, is to look to the back net. And then if, if he can't do it, he'll go for two runs. So, thought he's one of the more positive players on the side. He's in the air for a while. Australians uh, just starting to pick up their intensity again. Boy, this game does even flow in terms of momentum. They're starting to bounce around and look a little bit more lively, aren't they? Slow ball, no run. Good change up. for their life really I mean 62 is a defendable target and they we, we defended 66 in the past so yeah. just getting through Irwin there but picking up two Coriano for a big man moves very very quickly as you can see that he's got rid of the ball at light speed front off balance and reasonably accurate Todd now leg side two leg side wide two runs a lot of wides and no balls being bowled here. Just shows how much pressure is on these two teams. I think you'll find the New Zealanders bowl probably seven or eight wides themselves. Hopefully cut down on the no balls because those are a big no-no. Left side. Left side, two runs. 
great call there from Cruz. Very composed player. He's been in big match situations before. He's been to South Africa with the World Cup a couple of times. And uh, was unlucky the first time he went. He hurt his arm, but he's showing here that he's a great player. The bowling. And try to acknowledge that. Just defending. One of the few times we've seen the defensive stroke. One of the few times Toddy's ever played a defensive stroke, I think. <laughs> Third ball strike now for Corey Todd. Last ball of this uh, the 14th over. Oh, gone. It was a good shot, but it was straight down the throat. Uh, at the bowler's end, and the run out affected as well. Here we see the Australians converting the, uh, the third ball out. And they've created so many of them that it's a lucky thing that they haven't converted too many, otherwise we'll probably only be on 20 now. But if they start converting these and keep converting them, this could be, uh, this could be a horrible partnership. Things need to get positive for New Zealand. They need to start punching twos and doing it regularly. They've got two more overs after this. And they need to get more positive. He's looking to get bat on ball to avoid these third ball strikes that are building up on them. It's a good shot. Yeah, it's a lovely shot. Lovely shot. Just held it, waited for it nicely, and just punched into the top left too. Negative one. This uh, fourth pair for New Zealand. 65 the total after 52 was posted for the first two partnerships. Australia coming back in the second half of this innings. Really one partnership here, you know, this, this is a very vital partnership. First partnership, last partnership. They, they start and they end things, so obviously they start and they end things. So you need to make sure they're tidy, you need to make sure they're tight. And again, pressure's being set by another third ball strike. Corey Todd just seems to be uh, just a little tentative. He's not going for the shots. He seems to be happy to defend and leave. But he's on another third ball strike. Yeah, that's a better shot. And he's gone. And hit the, uh, hit Irwin. the shot hit Irwin. Rebounded onto the Australian fieldsman. He slapped it to the keeper. And uh, Irwin's out of here. That's another five down. Five runs deducted. A bit unlucky there. But uh, you need to make sure you get out of the way of the, of the fielders. And, and you need to run down the... You need to run down the net. That's the only way you can keep out of the way. And the Gouch just made the mistake of getting in the way. The Australians here bowling very, very well. They seem to have sorted out the leg side, targeted the leg side area for, the, for the, these two New Zealand players, and it seems to be working very, very well. Obviously, both of them like to hit the ball hard, so giving them something they can't hit is, is key. Two runs. Two runs. Just one thought from my, my point of view, Andre, is having two left-handers. Wouldn't you want to mix it up? Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 it's, not a, you know, it's not unusual to have two left-handers, but... It, like you say, you know, it gives the bowler something to think about. And the ball does swing a lot, so, well, you know, you want mistakes. They're bowling in swingers into these left-handers, concentrating on that leg side, and the New Zealanders can't get it away. If a right-hander was in there, it would uh, put pay to that. And this partnership is minus four, negative four. Total is only 60 feet. There's only nine balls left here, so they really need to get up and get, get at least ten runs. Good cricket. Todd uh, hitting that short ball straight into the ground, up to the net, two runs. Casino is gone, New Zealand 64. Huge pressure. Australia just seemed to switch up a gear and uh, started tidying things up. They seemed very confident in bowling to this, to this pair, so we have Jay Otto bowling the last over. Big pressure on him to convert this, these first three overs of pressure in, into a big negative partnership here. Obviously the pressure's on Corey and Gareth to get New Zealand up to a target that they would have thought of and would have set in their minds. And if they don't do that, they'll be feeling the momentum has gone to the Australian side. And Jay Otto has uh, the task of this last over in this New Zealand innings. Such an important over. Will New Zealand advance or will they fall back? They have 64 already. Sent back first ball. It's just, you know, 
to me, six right-handers occupy the first three partnerships and two left-handers at the end. Yeah, it seems a little strange. I mean, perhaps Corey could stand a little wider and, and uh, if he misses his legs, then it bowls a wide. Again, third ball strike. Yes, it's been a bit of a stalemate. Just with Todd on strike, he's faced a lot of deliveries for not many runs at all. And he's on another third ball strike. This is where Australia in recent overs have picked up their play. Bowling all over the place. What a delivery from Jay Otto. That is outstanding. It's a great ball. He's shown him four in swingers in a row, and, and he's bowled him an outswinger there, and he's not quite picked it. Minus five, 59 now. Ready, please. Superb stuff from Jay Otto. He got uh, two dot balls early in the over. Then the Yorker cleaning out Corey Todd. Oh, and again, straight through Todd, just missing the leg stick. And boy, oh boy, New Zealand are battling here to hold on to this 59 lead. Ready? It's a great over here from Jay Otto. This is really big pressure bowling, and he's an experienced player, and he knew his team needed him. He's come up with the goods. Leg side wide, two runs. So the uh, balls are not usually re bowled uh, during the innings, but in the case of the last partnership, the batsman gets a choice of whether he wants the wide to know balls to be re bowled. And Corey Todd has accepted that he wants the ball bowled again. This time he'll get, will he get the yes he will, he'll pick up two runs. Doesn't look happy Corey Todd, hasn't got his innings going at all. Three balls needed, they need, at least need to get back to zero. Negative three this partnership. Slow ball gone. A bit of miscommunication there from two batsmen. Things haven't been going their way, and that's the way it goes. You know, if, if pressure's on you, you just start holding things back a little bit. Really, it was Gareth's call there, and Corey didn't respond. Superb last over from Jay Otto. Didn't quite carry, it was a, an outside edge off the net. Just falling short of Johnson. Last ball of the innings. New Zealand winning the toss, batting first, have posted 58. Is that enough? Maybe two to get uh, to that psychological score of 60 is uh, absolutely vital here. Last ball. And no run scored, no attempt at a run. There it is, 16 overs complete. New Zealand have posted 58 in this World Cup final for 2002. A very disappointing last four overs for Gareth Irwin and Corey Todd. Minus eight between them. After a terrific start from Robert Mark Orchard, they put on 28. Then 24 between Graham Murray and Mark Colkin. Really working well. And uh, New Zealand had uh, 52 up after eight overs. Then it all started to go AWOL because the Australians came back. Lee Kelly and Ian O'Brien, that was a, an entertaining partnership. They put on 14 and uh, one big seven from Ian O'Brien. But Gareth Irwin and Corey Todd will take New Zealand to the break with just a little bit of a sour taste. Australian bowling but didn't start well. Scott Johnson, two overs, uh, one for 10. Not too bad there. Brent uh, Ravity, two overs, two for one. They look pretty good figures. The worst probably Aaron Mills, none for 24. Of two overs, two, two for five for Bobby Gray, three for six for Steve Butler. He was the best for the Australians, but I think the best bowler for me in this uh, grand final being Jay Otto. He bowled a beauty, two for three in that last uh, over, the 16th over for the Australians. So there it is. Australia need 59 to take their fourth World Cup. We'll be back after this. to take out another World Cup. They already have three in the bag. And uh, electric atmosphere here. The New Zealanders are uh, all set to go. Ian O'Brien 
to open up and uh, Nelson for Australia more wide two runs big pressure scenario here Ian needs to start up with a good over get the Australians under some pressure and, uh, and look to get his team on a roll could be should be caught get it go Australian team well there is just giving them a little bit of love after he's caught that ball and they seem to be reacting to it. Ready. Leading edge onto the net and what a good follow through from the big medium pacer. Australia already in the negative. Good. Pressure's on here. New Zealand can apply as many three ball strikes to Australia as, as, as they did to us. We'll be in a prime position to take this game out. Brent Ravity on strike for Australia. Next side, Next side wide to uh, runs conceded. Uh, O'Brien just falling away a little and uh, all but one delivery going down the leg side. The, uh, I had a word to the New Zealand coach beforehand with the assistant coach and he said that they'd be looking to bowl very tight to the, to the wide line so expect a few uh, extras. Slow ball. Oh, close! Great work from Mark Orchard. And the wicketkeeper, Corkin, took the bails off in a flash. Let's have a look from side on. Oh, he was oh, out of well. here. Well, well, well. Back in 1998 when we had the third umpire, I think... Uh, would have been beneficial just for that ball there. Good leg stump Yorker. Right on the foot there of Nelson. Two balls remaining, two to come. So important for New Zealand to put pressure on early as they've done with that opening wicket. into the game with New Zealand bowling. They get to feel the atmosphere of the game and characters like O'Brien will really get them involved. Ready. Last ball now from O'Brien. A top for opening over and a three ball strike. Chance for another wicket for New Zealand. Oh, wide. Poorly bowled. Opportunity let slip there by O'Brien, but uh, a good opening over, just three for Australia. You see there the uh, New Zealanders are looking to bowl Ready, bowl at the please. leg side line, look, looking to hit the Australians in the legs and take away any opportunity to score freely. So, obviously the, the wide's are going to come down the leg side, but uh, it creates an opportunity for, for a wicket. Justin Nelson and Brent Raverty are the first pair up, first partnership up for Australia. Orchard bowling here, it's going to bowl right arm round. Bowling around and getting good in swing. That's, uh, that's a healthy sort of combination. Gets good bounce as well, he's got good height. He's a very good bowler, as I said before, he's one of the promising players from the Northern Knights. Red side wide call. Pretty tough. So far, umpire James Winchipel has, uh, oh, that was a tough call. Australia five in the second over. Can we see there the balls hit the post on the side of the uh, court here? If you hit the post on the full, you get the maximum runs. Whereas if it hits the back net and in the side net, you get one run. Just a little, just a little short there, but uh, looking to bowl good around the wicket in swing, which is very hard to play because you get set up to drop with the offside, and of course it swings back into you. Oh, 
Beautiful bowler. Rabbits, he caught on the crease uh, there. Didn't know much about it. Well taken there from Mark Culkin. That's, that's cut the, uh, between the leg and the bat there, and he's just loved it. Ready. The last ball. No, he said three balls to go, I should say. Oh, good keeping. Good keeping from Culkin. Very tidy, very tidy behind the stumps there. He's got to move quickly, the ball swing a lot. I keep reminding myself, these are eight ball overs. <laughs> Fibble strike you. Forget that magic night at Albany in '98. Tongia, Tongia still, maybe to the corner. Kick it off, let's go. Blackmore in behind Sailor and then Lockyer. He loses it. Stamp got it. Unbelievable. Oh, for some of those Lockyer fumbles this time around. Oh, for a try. Getting that easy. Kick it off. was an unforgettable night and maybe there's one still to come in Wellington with our big guns fire we've got a good shot strangely although the first game of rugby league played in this country took place in Wellington in 1908 in fact our floor manager Dave was there the Kiwis and Kangaroos have met only five times there it's 3-2 to Australia so by But uh, Kalkin now has given up the gloves to bowl uh, the first of his two overs for the innings. Nelson on strike, bowling uh, over the wicket. Oh, it's a good stroke. Four runs. He picks up the bonus three for the back net, off the side net, and that's uh, the best shot from the Australians so far in this uh, run chase for the World Cup. Yeah, it's a great shot from Nelson. It'll alleviates a lot of pressure here. If they can get a few runs, nice easy runs, it just tends to calm the batsman down. Ready. Now both of the same end, the Australian batsman, but Mark Orchard wasn't able to get the ball to the keeper and they uh, scraped through for two runs. You can see the Australian batsman there just taking off, not really waiting for a run, waiting for a call from his, uh, from his partner there. So lucky to get away with it, but um, needed to be tidied up. Good, good batting from the Australians here, just starting to take control of this partnership. If they get 30 or 40 here, it could make things very, very difficult for New Zealand. And the pressure now on the New Zealanders is a nice, uh, composed look about Nelson on strike. Gravity backing up. 24 they've put on. Inside edge. There's nothing quite like a back net to calm the nerves, of course. So it just makes, uh, makes for very easy uh, over conversions. Dead ball, Mark. Brandon, so Brent, just stay away, please, and get on with the game. None of that business, yeah? Mark Elkin just being talked to by the umpire there, just told to get out of it and get on with the game. Ready? Play. Good strike again, four runs. So this has been a pour over from Kalkin. He's given up two fours. And now Australia are up to 28 after that first over, where they only got uh, three. They have gone beautifully in the last two. Yeah, Mark really needs, needs to concentrate on what he's doing with the, uh, with the rest of the New Zealand team. He needs to keep it within the team instead of uh, going outside of that. Okay, can be 
Ready then? New Zealand need a big over here to get themselves back in the game. If uh, Australia get 10 off this or even 5 or 6 off this, it's, uh, it's looking like a shutout. So they need to really get back into the game here. Gareth Irwin bowling here from the uh, Americans uh, regional side. The left arm bowler's got a great change up and uh, you'll probably see it later on. Hopefully if he gets into a third ball scenario he'll uh, let them have the change up. That's a great out, that's a great conversion there from Mark Orchard. Oh brilliant. It's just what they needed. Gareth Irwin's come in with a couple of beauties. The Yorker here and it goes straight up into the top net. Slapped onto the stumps there. Mark Orchard's done it. He moves very well for a big man, doesn't he? Thank you, Mark. Australia back down to 23. Well, oh, this is uh, picked up this New Zealand side. This, this over by Irwin has been uh, a little beauty so far. Good work there from the batsman. He's just rabbit. He's really just punched it nicely into the uh, leg side. He's got to keep himself composed here. It's a great shot after uh, being shown up by the bowler. Beautiful fielding. Good teamwork. Australia's looking to put it away here. They're just starting to hold a few more balls and looking very, very positive. thinking that there's a third ball strike on there but um, it is now big moment for New Zealand got a peg Australia back here and they have it an opportunity with the third ball strike and he's, he's always put him down Graham Murray that was quite a comfortable catch those are the kind of things that can win and lose a match really needed that really really needed that it's a big seven run turnaround there they're on 27 where they would have been on 20 and looking a little bit on the negative side just seemed to grab for it instead of letting it fall into his hands. Big moment gone. Yeah! What a good over from uh, Irwin. Left arm up. So this pair have done well for Australia. Ravity and Nelson putting on 27. And uh, if you were to look at uh, the New Zealand's first pair, put on 28, New Zealand would win the skin. It's just to keep in mind, Andre, just in case there's a tie later. Okay, can we start of course, of course, but uh, I haven't seen too many ties in the cricket. Hopefully we won't see one today. This will be uh, hopefully coming down to the last ball, the last over. Remember last year we, we saw Auckland beat Australia in the last over of the game. Guy Kyman bowling the second to last over of the game and really shutting Australia out of it. Okay. He's not playing today, but we've got some excellent bowlers on the side. And I think it's Graham Murray about to uh, kick in and take over. Steve Butler has uh, been promoted to join this man here, Mills. So as we see, uh, Mills is uh, Australia's equivalent of Ian O'Brien here, so if he gets away to a flying start like Ian, then we might see a few uh, bats being waved around and a bit of a celebration. Okay, and Graham Murray make up for that uh, drop catch in the previous over. 27 Australia, we're into the fifth over. Left side, two runs. A lot of feeling in this game. There's a lot more chat than I've ever seen in, a, in an end of cricket uh, match, a, a test match. Um, it's a lot of feeling here. Australia know that New Zealand are right on their tails and with a real chance here. Pressure. Two runs for Australia up to 31 now.
25 for Australia, they're back to 26. He's going to really need that. Big mistake there from Mills, just chopped it on. If he'd hit it into the net for two, they would have had New Zealand really reeling there. Great shot. Great shot from Mills. Beautiful feeling by the New Zealand skipper, Kelly. Uh, but Mills is home. Show great composure there just to knock the ball into the net for two. It's a little bit relaxed on the running there. Two laps, Graham. Two laps. Two balls left is the call from the umpire. And they'll get the overthrow. It was a bit unlucky because the stumps were broken by a good bit of fielding. I would have thought the rule should be, Andre, that if you break the stumps with a good throw, the ball should be dead. Yeah, but the, the game's all about speed, uh, not slowing it down there, Hogan. So um, if you hit the stumps, you've just got to hit them again to get running up. So a mixed over from Graham Murray. And he did pick up the wicket of Mills. And this pair, Butler and Mills for Australia, put on four in that uh, opening over of their partnership. 31 the total. Big opportunity here for uh, New Zealand to shut down Australia. If they can hold this partnership to, to maybe 10 runs, they're still in the game and there's still a huge opportunity to put the pressure on the next pair. Anyway, New Zealand skipper is now having a warm-up. Lee Kelly. Okay. He's uh, getting a bit of a bollocking from the umpire. I don't think it was too intentional. Lee's not that kind of play. He's just uh, let go of a slightly slow ball. It's uh, swung a long way. Are you ready? Aaron Mills on strike now. Lee Kelly. Oh, beautiful bowling. Right up in the block hole. Nearly getting through Aaron Mills. He's pretty fired up, the New Zealand skipper. So well to get that between both legs, actually. Two. Two runs. It's a great shot there again from Mills. He's really showing huge composure here just to stay within what he's doing and not worry about the atmosphere. James Winchell, the uh, official here for this World Cup final from England. Leg side, two runs. Ready. Australians just starting to squeeze a few runs out here and there. Needs to, New Zealand really needs to take a wicket to get on a roll. Change of direction over the wicket. Oh, missed opportunity. Irwin was the man who had the stumps inside. He had all three of them, but he couldn't pull it off. Direction around the wickets. Lee Kelly coming on the wicket now, probably looking to just uh, cramp up. That's from here, trying to get him to squeeze one into the arms of uh, Gareth Irwin. Oh, could have been a catch. I think the ball went straight off Mark Orchard's uh, foot Two up into the me. air. And Gareth Irwin couldn't uh, gather it in. Just those Two half chances aren't being taken. Ready. And Australia up to 39. Last ball. Last ball coming up now for Lee Kelly. Can he inspire his side? They've never won a World Cup in New Zealand. Australia won them all.
So over comes to an end, and uh, Lee Kelly does well because he creates a third ball situation for the first ball of the next over. Okay, James, ready, please. Ball's name. Said our third ball uh, scenario comes up again. We need a big over, big over here to take the pressure off themselves and put some pressure on the Australians. Put some pressure on the next partnership that's coming in. Okay, fellas, this ball is third ball, choice ball. Everybody ready, please? Corey Todd has uh, the job to do this first ball of his first over. All the bowlers get to bowl two overs. Right arm over the wicket. It's uh, Corey Todd's first. I apologise. Right arm around. He's coming right arm around to Steve Butler. Play. Third ball. Is he out? No, he's safe. Many times. The ball was left for Ian O'Brien to gather in and take the bails off, but it just slowed up and enabled the Australian batsman Butler to get back or get in. Ready, please. Yeah, I, th I think in that case, we should have seen one of the line fielders run on the way the batsmen, uh, like the Australians did, and, and, and we haven't seen that. Just would have slowed him down a little bit. That's gone. He's got it. Rob Orchard has done it. He's pulled on a beauty. He slapped the ball off the net, straight into the hands of little talking there behind the stumps. Look at that. That's brilliant. Oh, that's fantastic work there for Rob Orchard. And great work from... Mark Elkin to make sure the ball was taken because in that scenario you might think the ball's going to hit the stumps and you just leave it and there goes another chance. Just when you think Australia are getting away with this game. New Zealand pull it back. 35. So he'll be looking to uh, capitalise on any mistakes here after not putting in as great a performance as he could with the bat. He'll be looking to really put some pressure on the Australians here. It's good, and so a third ball strike looms again now for Corey Tillett. Well, if I was going to pick a, a defining moment of this final, I think this ball is it. Todd, who batted, uh, who struggled with the bat, there's now a chance of the ball. They haven't done it. Australia have run a leg by. Good bowling there to Corey. Make sure the batsman really had to play it and put it in a, in a spot which was very tough for him. Trying to get, get his chance, his side back in the game here. Two Great bowling here from Corey. He's making sure that the batsman had to play every ball, putting pressure on them, not giving them any free hits. Last ball here for Corey. Big opportunity to put some pressure back on the Australians. No ball. No ball, two runs. So Australia now up to 40. Six overs gone. The huddle. Ball name, please. This New Zealand side. Lee Thank Kelly you. trying to... Uh, Thank you. Motivate and inspire his teammates. Australians uh, have it in the hand at the moment. Yeah. Steve yeah, Butler and Aaron so Mills. Partnership of 13. All of these uh, New Zealand, all of the New Zealand team will know their role and they'll just be in the huddles. They'll be looking to make sure that they're doing their role, geeing each other up and trying to make sure that each other gets everything perfect. Good at communication between Butler and uh, Aaron Mills there. Sense the danger. Okay. And it was uh, Rob Orchard once again. Brother Mark Orchard uh, is bowling his second over. Really? Great work from the Australian batsman there. That was a certain out. Not out. Not out the call for a stumping attempt by Mark Culkin. Again, we have the thrust. Strike three scenario. New Zealand really need a wicket here to get back into the game. Well played. 
Very smart. He got the ball into the ground and bouncing it up beyond the fielders. Guarantees that they get uh, through for the single and avoid that three ball strike. Crazy direction now coming over the wicket. Butler. Good strike. Good shot. Yeah, it's a great shot. He's really taken the fielders out of play there. Had no chance of getting it out there. Ready. It's been a good uh, partnership, a heady partnership. They've uh, been able to maintain the momentum of the first partnership at 27. They've got 16 on the board. And again, it's excellent indoor cricket. It's great batting, really. I, mean, I think they've broken the game down already. The first period really has set the scene and has taken a lot of pressure off the last three pairs. All they have to do is get 10 runs a pair and they, you know, the game's over. Ready? So for New Zealand, they need wickets. And again, it's too easy. It's too easy. Two more. Two more to Last two, this pass. Ready, fielders? We saw in the Australians bowled though that the game's not over until the last ball's bowled. There's so much there's so much pressure on out here and with minus five being exerted every time you get out, you know, the game can go backwards very quickly. One run. Last ball. The last ball of Mark Orchard's so over. Well, it's been identical really. New Zealand 28-24, the first two pairs. Australia 27-21. It can certainly turn around at any moment in this format. Yes. And they've just batted out the over. So Butler and Mills have done particularly well in keeping out Mark Orchard there. Terrific partnership from uh, Mills and Butler. Flipping on 21. So eight overs gone now. 48 on the board. 59 to win. There's eight overs left. Thank you. Now we see traditionally that the third partnership in the innings is the Take weakest partnership. Again, Doesn't mean they can't play. It just means that they are the ones that you, you want to bat in the third. That's you put your list. It's like batting jack, I suppose, in, in outdoors. So you. you put your you put your jack in at number three and, and hope that he uh, that he comes off with a good spear. Corey Otto has uh, come out to bat with okay. Bobby Gray for Australia in the third partnership. And Ian O'Brien is back into the attack. Is it, sorry, it's uh, Gareth Irwin. Ian O'Brien is uh, by the bowler. Oh, beautiful ball. I thought it had uh, cleaned out. Bobby Gray first up. This is an important over. Irwin was brilliant in his first over to get New Zealand back in the match uh, around about the third over mark. What can he do here? So you just get a sense here that New Zealanders feel they can really put some pressure on this partnership. You can just see they've just sort of cheat up a bit. They're looking a bit more, with a bit more intent when they move, with their movements and they're going to really look to crush this partnership because one partnership here obviously can change the game. It can win it or it can lose it. There's two new batsmen. Otto known for his bowling, not so much as batting. Good batting there, though. Stolen two. And the 50 up for Australia. There are only seven behind New Zealand, but uh, there's seven and a half overs left in this match. A long way to go. Two more. Great call there from Corey Otto. His partner was looking to hold, but he, he thought he could get home and he took the chance and got there. Safe is the call. Great running from the Australians. They're looking very sharp between the wickets. Two more runs. And steady twos, and that's what Australia would have wanted from this. Uh, Opening over this pair. Final ball. 
great hands there from Ian O'Brien on the back. It's, you know, it's, he's, a, he's an opening bowler for, uh, for Wellington. You can see that uh, things have changed in the past. Bowlers can now catch. Last ball for Irwin. So uh, again, we don't have a third umpire, but um, I'd say this is gone. Yeah, that's well gone. <laughs> Ready, please. Just that bit of luck New Zealand needed. Bowler's name. Thank you. Neutral umpire you. for this final. <laughs> really? It's wearing yellow though, Martin. <laughs> okay, everybody. Wow. Checking to see if he's got green, green trousers on. Now Ian O'Brien comes Ready. back. Bobby Gray. Okay, thank you, Joyce. Cheers, mate. Nine runs off that the first over of the third partnership. Beautifully played. It was a good Yorker from O'Brien. So New Zealand are going with a very sort of untraditional field here. They've got two men on the league side. Very, one's very square, one's just set up in a traditional league side field. So it opens up the offside. You can see they obviously want to go to the league side. Six attack. I remember Corey Otto giving Ian O'Brien a couple of rib ticklers early on when New Zealand batted. And it's now time for Otto to take it on the body. Shot there for Corey Otto. I think he's one up in the battle here so far. 60, they go past New Zealand now. Dead ball, dead ball. No, you've got dead ball oh, called. Dead ball. Dead ball. And uh, Kempers are starting to raise a little bit here. Played if you come here. You know, Brian has been called up to uh, right. listen. You've got to give the bat some reasonable time, yeah, okay? He's still, he's only just taking his stance, he's not even looked at once yet. That's why I called it dead ball, all right? A bit sneaky, but if I let it go. Uh, but I know what he's saying. All right. Okay. Second, secondly, yeah, uh, Kate. Just I know. I realise that the passions are running high. Let's play the game, then we get everyone wins. Yeah. All right. Please. Thank you, Corey. Calm down, little please. Yeah. Thank you. Good words there by umpire Winshuffle. Although not everyone okay. wins, there's going to be a loser in this final. And at the moment, Australia are in front, but two in front. Please. It's over. Good. An interesting call from the umpire with that uh, with that dead ball because in the past, if you if you're on the batting box, as far as the bowler and the umpire is concerned, you're fair game. So I think we need a clarification of the rules here. I'm pretty sure though that the umpire was right in terms of giving him fair time to play. Third ball, batsman, third ball. Have we got another third ball scenario. Well, these become more crucial every time they pop up, these third ball opportunities. It happened around this time for New Zealand. They started to lose wickets when they batted. Two runs. Full toss on leg stump, put away. Okay. This is the Australian team here can smell blood. They're not going to give it away that easy. Okay. Two balls remaining. Ready. A good stroke. Two. Final ball. Final ball. So 16 runs this pair have put on. It's interesting to note that New Zealand have won the skins. They won the first pair race, the second pair race. But they haven't Over. been able to peg Australia back You've changed direction. Over. as they did to New Zealand in this uh, third partnership. Uh, ten overs gone now. Ready, please, bowler's name. Look, Australia just looks to get ones the ball now. They're not really under any pressure. All they have to do is keep New Zealand out. Don't do anything stupid and the game's this. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Okay, fellas. Still a fair bit of feeling on this game. Right here, Pies, uh, asked them to tone it down. I don't think that's going to uh, have any bearing on uh, the players. I think they're just going to keep going with the passion they're playing with. All 
upstairs then, please. Ronnie, over the wicket. Thank you. All right, Corey, over the wicket, mate. All right, it's the uh, New Zealand skipper. Ready. Steve Kelly is uh, coming in now. Play. Here we go. Over number 11. In a, tighter, in a tighter scenario there, I think it would have been the Australians would have taken that run, but they don't need to. See, all they're doing really there is giving them away five Third runs if they get run out. Third ball. Scores have changed. Third Three. ball is called. Last ball of the last over, and this last uh, first ball of this over. And they've got through comfortably. New Zealand have not been able to affect the third ball strikeout. Corriotto just playing great shot, squeezing it through the covers there, just keeping it on the ground where Ready. he'll find the yeah, cover fielder there was just jumping in the air. Yes. 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 Would have been out too. Corey Todd. Yes. So the Australians are not presenting New Zealand with any opportunity to get them out here. They're putting the balls in gaps and they're just dead batting and holding and just upsetting the rhythm of the New Zealanders. Really decisive calling there from Corriotto, just squeezing the ball out. In most, most cases, people would have run that, but they don't need the run. They just need to keep it, keep things simple. Two. Two runs. 69. Good swing from Kelly. Just inside the uh, wide line. Little Lee's played a few uh, first class games for Wellington as an all rounder. And a good safe play. Final ball. Last over, Ready. about to be completed for this partnership. Otto. Leg side. Leg side wide, two runs. 72, 73 now. Well, you see the batsman doesn't take the runs. He's just, uh, off my fault, it wasn't uh, last, last over. Big call from the umpire there. Okay, gents, thank you. 12 over, one. That's 11 overs gone, and one more over left for this partnership. They've got it Robbie. up to 25. Consistent uh, this Australian Legends, side through ready. their partnerships 27 21 now 25 73 five overs to go okay James all set play Stranger things happen in a little cricket game. I remember a few, few years back, the team was on 100 chasing 70. With one partnership to go, they ended up getting 66. Let's go wide, two runs. It's hard to see the world champions backing up from here. Unless New Zealand can come up with some real brilliant work. Rob Orchard is getting the ball to move. Great 
batting from the two Australians here. They're really just putting a pressure on, on New Zealand. They're not doing anything too flash. They're just looking to hit the ball into the net and put the pressure right on New Zealand. Getting that ball into the ground and getting the, the bounce off the off the carpet, avoiding the fielders and time to get through for another single. 76. It's great batting for Corey, just giving his partner time to get home. They're not looking to squeeze two, just looking to dead bat, so to speak, and uh, give himself time to get home. Last ball. Uh, it's the last ball coming up of this partnership. It's been uh, the best partnership so far in the match, 28. And Bobby Gray plays it out. That is a huge partnership. And all the Australian teammates are up out of their chairs. Wonderful work. We're down to the last four overs. Scott Johnson and Jay Otto had the job to do to carry Australia home. 27 from Nelson and Ravity, 21 from Butler and Mills, Otto and Gray superb with their 28. And New Zealand just five wickets, boy do they need it now. Fill that column. They uh, 18 runs in arrears. They need wickets, and they and need Graham's it fast. Right arm over the wickets. Jay Otto is uh, to take strike. I suppose the, the good news here for New Zealand is that Jay Otto was in one of the partnerships last year when they played Australia that really crushed, it was crushed under the pressure. And uh, if anyone's going to go, hopefully it's him. Scott Johnson, the Australian captain, running through. The loud, yes, two more. I think Jay Otto was superb with the ball. He really got Australia back into the match. Another great shot there from the captain. Well, the worst thing about the Australians is that they learn from their mistakes. So you very rarely get them in a scenario where you can crush them twice. You have to do something different. You have to apply pressure. And New Zealand really needs to get on, get on its horse now and, and get something going. One run. It all looks too easy. One run. 81. The difference now is 23. strong stroke there. Okay. Fantastic shot there from Jay Otto. Really just punching it where the thought is up. Looking at a standing touch already. Two runs and the partnership is uh, already eight. I'll find deliveries. Looking a little flat here. Let's just pick things up a little bit. Two balls remaining. Ready. Yeah! Bowling! Straight through Johnson. That is outstanding comeback there. One ball. Ready, please. It looked too easy for the Aussies. Now that's gone right through. Desperate times for Ball the men in black. Thank you, fellas. Let's Scott go. Scott Johnson, the Australian skipper, in the negative. Jay Otto, Thank five. You.
three overs Boy, there. Wicket, Corey. New Zealand need wickets. They need probably at least four. Yeah. They had a huge right. over here. And, uh, Corey's a good bowler, and I've seen him in the past, so they need to put some pressure on. At least get it to within wicket, 10 runs, you. so the two wickets Everybody brings it back please. into it. Uh, right if they can apply right pressure right. here, anything can happen in the last couple of overs, and it really becomes a huge, huge match. Corey Todd. One run. down there was a difficult one for Mark Corkin. The rebound couldn't quite get into Murray's grass. Okay, brothers. Corey, they're just looking to slap the ball onto the stumps. So the ball isn't quite travelling fast enough. Look to give it some speed and go for the run out. He's getting the ball into the carpet, up into the net. One run only. We're in the 14th over. Australia have got a good lead now on New Zealand. 24. Australian boys are looking very, very solid. Getting beat up by their bench. They've got a, well, not a huge uh, support network in the top left-hand corner of the, of the stands there, but they've been very quiet for most of the game up until uh, the last partnership with New Zealand and all through the batting. No ball. No ball, two runs. And gone. Run out. Bring it smack onto the stumps. Is there some hope there for the Sorry. Brilliant work. Front foot, no ball. Two it's runs so conceded. The run out, effective. Great work from Mark Richard there. He was in the air for a long time, so he had to come down and get the ball. He's a sharp builder. Okay, just uh, to clarify, the dismissal means uh, Australia minus five. They did not get the runs for the no ball. So they're back up to 77. The cricket. Two runs. Over. Australia just getting the ball in behind the fielders there. It's very hard to turn yourself around once you're moving forward. So it's a great play by the Australian bats. We're looking very, very tidy. Two okay, fellas, ready, please. Johnson and Otto, they okay, just want to keep Thankfully. in the positive. Okay, They're not too oh worried God, about God, adding God. runs. It's just that they can't afford Fearless. and don't want to Thank lose you. any. Scott Johnson uh, has been out twice. See Corey Otto there with 18 runs, and he's really their, their weakest batsman, so he's dug very, very deep and come up with the goods for his team. Okay, fellas. Right on, Mark Corkin is going to bowl the penultimate over in this World Cup final. That's good to side the line, no score. Got to try and build up a triple strike here. They can get a dot ball from this delivery from Corkin. Maybe a man cat or two. Leg side, two runs outside the line. Just outside the line, two runs to Australia. So the man cat is, uh, whilst it's not a great ploy and is, it is, it is not likely to be used, that uh, the Australians don't like it too much. But if you find the batsman is backing up, they tend to accept the fact that they are cheating and, 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 and take responsibility. Leg side, on the line. Touching the line is wide. Two runs for another leg side wide. Yes, the man cat is running the non-striker out as the bowler delivers. Balls haven't quite gone New Zealand's way today. They need wickets though. Australia won't mind the dot balls, they just keep on knocking the ball they do get into the corner for one. Yes, 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 yes. 
Oh, missed. That would have been out. One run. Okay, Robbie. Rob Orchard had a chance. And you get the feeling now that time is running out. Okay. That would have been given. Unusual to see Robbie Orchard missing out like that. He's usually so sharp and so onto it. Play. Yeah. Nice, a good shot. That's all I had to hit. It had to be a direct throw. Yeah. Kelly missed. We have ten balls left in this final. The crowd have gone quiet. Australia have 27 runs in the bag. That equates to New Zealand needing six wickets. Six wickets with nine balls left. They can start playing the Mission Impossible tune, I think. Ready. Thanks, James. Scott Johnson, the captain for Australia. Happy to defend over. and James, complete please. the 15th over. Australia have moved up to 87. The partnership between Johnson and Otto is Ten. 11. 16th over. And New Hawaii Zealand need, the a, they they need six wickets. Ready, please. Need a miracle, really, really. Robbie. Need a miracle. <laughs> Robbie, are you? Jay Otto has been a real star, so is Corey Otto. The Otto brothers have done the business. Australia just one over away from their fourth consecutive World Cup. There it is. 2002. Okay. Play. Comfortably away for two more. The Australians will probably just look to hold every ball unless they really get an opportunity to score. Uh, there's no pressure on them, of course. They can they can even accept a few outs, but they'll probably still look to get to 100 if they get the opportunity. New Zealand now needs seven wickets and seven balls. And they won't do it. Two runs. It's pretty much Australia now. They have uh, got an unassailable lead. 32. Ready. Runs ahead of New Zealand. Oh, beautiful stroke. Four and four runs to boot. Play net. Four runs. Julian, it's been an exhibition of batting by the Australians that has, that has probably superseded the New Zealanders. They started very, very well. They continued it all the way through, and they've just really shut New Zealand out. Legs are wide. Shot. Shot. Yeah. It started to go wrong for New Zealand, really, with that uh, last partnership. That was a shocker. Legs side. Yeah, it's, it's one of those scenarios where... You know, there's nowhere to run and yeah. hide, yeah, and, and, and if things go bad, they, they tend to go horribly wrong. Uh, they in a scenario with so much pressure here. Yeah. 66 New Zealand had after three partnerships after 12 overs, but they backed up to 58, and Australia have done it comfortably. Good yeah. behind, Johnson's gone. Ready? He didn't even need to play uh, the shot at all. Little. Take a please. Through to Mark Corkin. So back to 93. Okay. Play. The New Zealanders will be very disappointed here. They've put a lot of time and energy into preparing a game plan that they, you know, they felt could beat the Australians. And they obviously applied it very, very well in the semi-finals and caught Australia off guard. But there's nothing worse than an Australian when he's just been beaten and gets another opportunity to come back and shove it in your face again. Oh, good catch. Really good catch by Lee Kelly. Bobby, uh, hey, Jan. Jay Otto, I should say, was just uh, looking to have a bit of fun at the end. But a very two good eight. catch indeed by Lee Kelly. Well, I've got to say, I think tactically, Ready. they had two left-handers in at the end for New Zealand. Ready. When you've got six right-handers, didn't make a lot of sense. Ready. And yeah. Australia Three. were able to jump on that with their in swingers into the left-handers. Yeah. Australia would have looked at the, uh, obviously, Corey hurt them very badly in the semi-final. We would have looked at that and said, how can we shut him down? And to come out to left-hand, it's probably a little bit questionable, but the Australians did bowl very, very well. Last ball of this World Cup final. Switched away for five runs. And that sums it up for Australia. They've dominated this World Cup final here in Wellington.
sublime display of horse indoor cricket. some progress but in the fourth boy that was a shocker minus eight and instead of going on to about the 80 mark they backed up to 58 and then Australia just continued to show consistent cool calm collected and composed cricket so they take out this fourth World Cup and they win it convincingly here in Wellington you find good times, good food, good entertainment and good hospitality. A place where people get to know your name. Only at your local. There's a local near you. A walk away in your neighbourhood so you don't have to worry about driving or close to your work in the city. It's your local so look for the sign of good hospitality at your local point sports bar. It's your local point. It's your local point. It's your local Welcome back to the uh, indoor centre here in Wellington where Australia have wrapped up this fourth World Cup in convincing style. New Zealand batting first. They uh, started well with the Orchard Brothers. They put on 28, then 24 between Murray and Cork. And Kelly and O'Brien uh, had their moments. And uh, at the 12 over mark, they had 66 on the board. But Gareth Irwin and Corey Todd just couldn't get it going at all. And they backed up big time and could only post 58. And for Australia, it was Jay Otto who really did... Uh, clamped down on the, the New Zealanders in those final four overs. Two for three off his two overs. And of course, says Steve Butler, the best figures there of three for six. It was a good all-round performance by Australia. They were a little slow getting going, but they came through beautifully with the field, in the field and with the ball. The, with the batting, it was just consistency personified. 27 for the first partnership, 21, 28, and then to wrap it up, 21 between uh, Scott Johnson, the skipper, and Jay Otto, who for me was the man of the match for New Zealand. They just couldn't get enough uh, of the wickets that uh, would keep them in the match. Rob Orchard took three for 13, and Graham Murray two for seven. But, uh, they just were completely outplayed by a very consistent Australian side. Australia have uh, picked up their fourth World Cup. There's uh, Lee Kelly, the New Zealand captain, looking a bit glum. He'll have his turn in two years' time. But in the meantime, the spoils go to Australia. And we now go to the match presentation where we have Mark Sinney, the World Indoor Cricket Federation president, president, to present the trophy. Yes, and what a fantastic game of indoor cricket here. Could you please put your hands together for the New Zealand Community Trust 2002 Men's Champions Australia. Fantastic. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, obviously thank all the guys. It's been a terrific week. Uh, had a fantastic time. Um, wouldn't change any one of yours for the world. Commiserations to New Zealand. Um, I mean, probably, you mean, thereabouts all week. Probably just not your day, but I'm sure if you hang in there, you'll get one. Thanks, guys. time for Australia. They've got a hold on it big time. There it is. 
indoor cricket world cup 2002 comes to an end where the green and gold triumph once more it's been a terrific week uh, here in the capital wonderful indoor cricket uh, throughout the seven days the wellington in indoor sports centre did a great job putting on the event terrific crowds good support and it's been a great pleasure bringing you live coverage of this world cup final for 2002 we hope you've enjoyed it we'll see you soon Thank you.